Hi everybody, it's Michelle and in this video I'm going to show you guys how I make my ballet slippers, the women's slippers. This is by far the most popular pattern, the free pattern that I have on the blog. And I'm going to do the video demonstration and show you guys how I put this together. The supplies we're going to need of course is our yarn and for this I'm just using Red Heart Super Saver. You can use any type of yarn you want. I wouldn't use like a chunky yarn because that will change the size of the slipper. I plan on making more with the Red Heart with Love yarn because it's super soft. I love it. But just for the purposes of doing this video tutorial, I'm using Red Heart Super Saver. And it's a great yarn to use for these slippers anyway because it's really rugged and these need to stand up to a lot of wear and tear. They will last for a very long time if you take good care of them. So I made it in a solid color. You can make them in several different colors. You can switch out your yarns to make a multicolor. You see that in the pictures on the blog where I do make them multicolor. But we're going to do this all in one solid color and I'm going to show you how I put it together at the end. We will need an F hook and I use my clover hooks for that and a tapestry needle. If you don't have a tapestry needle, don't sweat it. You can use your crochet hook to kind of sew in the that final end in the back. And of course, just scissors. And that is all we're going to need. So let's get started. To begin, I'm going to form my loop and chain two. And then we are going to single crochet five times into this very first chain right here. One, two, three, four, and five here. And just join with the slip stitch to form a little circle. Now that's just our base for starting. That's a very toe of the slippers. We're going to chain two and double crochet two times into each one around and you're going to end up with 10 stitches. All the way around. These are really quick to make and they make excellent gifts for everyone that you know. Two more. Now we are going to join with a slip stitch and that is our second row. Chain two and the same thing for this next round. Two double crochet in each stitch around. So then you're going to end up with 20 stitches around. Now at any point you can switch out your yarn colors to make them striped, multicolor, two-tone, whatever you want to call it. If you see the pictures on the blog post you'll see what I'm talking about. Some of them I do in two colors and alternate them just here and there and make stripes or just a two-tone. The front is one color, the back is a different color. The possibilities are kind of limitless, really, when you think of all the colors available and the different alternatives for where you can switch out the yarn. Almost. 
Austin. Okay, so we should have 20. And you might want to go back and double check if you're not sure of your stitch count. But I'm going to join that. Now this next row, that's row three, round three. So round four, we are going to chain two and two double crochet in this first one. And then just one double crochet in the next. And then two double crochet in the next one. And one double crochet in the next. So we're still increasing, but not by as much. These first two, we were increasing in each stitch around. And this one, we're increasing in every other stitch around. So we have two, one, then two. We'll end up with 30 stitches on this round after doing this. Let me get some more yarn. One, one, two, one, one, two, one, one, two, one, one, two, one, one, uh oh, and pay attention. I almost skipped that one. What's the great thing about these? Once you get past this row right here, you can pretty much go on autopilot to finish the rest until you get to the back portion because it's the same thing around each time. And you don't have to count all of your stitches. And this is the last one. Then we're going to join that. Now from this point on here, we are going to just put one double crochet in each stitch around. And that will be for row five, it's five through nine. So the next five rows, five, six, seven, eight, nine, count on my fingers, yes. So the next five rows, just one double crochet all the way around. And a good way to keep your place with this, you might want to just grab a little piece of yarn. Let me do that to mark your spot. That way you can just count rows. You don't have to worry about where you are. I just kind of stick a piece of yarn in there like that as a stitch marker. And just one double crochet all the way around. Join with the slip stitch and start your new row until you finish round nine. And I'm going to do that off camera and come back when I finish round nine and show you how we go from there and do the back portion of the slipper. Okay. okay, I have made it to the end of round nine. And this is the front portion of our slipper. And now we're going to work on the back portion here this back portion where your foot slips in. You can take out, oh, I already took out my little marker. I don't need that anymore. Now, when I designed this pattern, I designed it to fit a size seven. And of course you can have a little bit smaller foot, a little bit bigger foot. They will stretch. So if the foot is a lot bigger than a size seven, you can try to modify this by adding maybe a row or two right here to make this front part come up further, bigger, and then adding more rows at the back also. It should work. But this is for a size seven, so we're up to round nine here, and we're gonna start the back. We are going to double crochet two times, and double crochet, I mean, sorry, chain two, 
and double crochet in each stitch across to for 21 stitches. So we're not going to go all the way around. We're only going to go the next 21 stitches. So we have that and then we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one. And we're going to stop right there. So if you include the first chain two, we should have 22 stitches across that we're going to work with. That's going to be that bottom portion of our slipper. Now we're going to chain two and turn and just double crochet across. If you want to double check your stitch count there, you go ahead and do that. This is the only other time you really need to pay attention. And then you can just double crochet and turn, double crochet and turn from here till you finish. We're double crocheting all the way across. And we're going to do this here from, let's see, that is row 10 through row 19. So that's 10 rows and you can just count those off as you go. So for 10 rows, these next 10 rows here, total to the end, we're just going to double crochet across chain two and turn same thing until we get to 19. I'm going to do that off camera and we will come back and see how we finish off the slippers. I have come to the end of row 19 and we have finished with the slipper except we are going to put an edging around the top. You can leave it like this if you want but it kind of looks unfinished. What we're going to do is just put this little edging all the way around the top portion of the slipper. And we're going to do that by chaining one and then just a single crochet all the way around this top, well the side edge here, which is now the top, around here, all the way around. So let's do that now. And you just kind of have to feel your way through this because this is not a normal section to be crocheting on. So we're just going to find those spaces and single crochet in there. It's a little awkward holding it, but it's okay. It's pretty quick to get it done. I will note that when I'm making these for me personally, I usually leave off a row at the end to make them just a little bit smaller because I have like a six and a half foot size and they fit better on me if I leave off one row because these are made for about a size seven foot and that is US women's size seven. The written pattern for these slippers is on the Poochie Baby blog and I'll put the link below so you can see the written pattern. Now we've come to this section here, which is easier, that front piece.
Back around the other side now. I'm going to pull out a lot of yarn and start making a bunch of these because my supply has disappeared. They disappear like socks. I can only find one of each color, so I need to make me some new ones for this coming fall and winter. And I'll be making them both out of just this regular Super Saver yarn and the With Love. Maybe some Hobby Lobby. I love this yarn if I still have some left. This last one here. And that is it. Our edging is done. Now we're going to flip these inside out when we're totally finished. So what we're going to do now is cut this yarn and leave a very long tail because we need to sew this back end here. And I think this is what people have the most difficult time visualizing on the written pattern so I'm going to show you guys how to do that. So make this very long so we can sew. Just cut that. You're finished with your yarn. Just set it aside. Now you need your tapestry needle. Wait first let me gather this through and tie that off. There we go. Or my tapestry needle. So Here's the slipper. This is the back heel. This will be sewn together, this part right here. So if you fold it this way, we're going to sew this back part together. Just like if you were sewing anything else together. If I can get my yarn in the needle. If you do not have a tapestry needle, you can weave the yarn back and forth through here just using your crochet hook, but it's just easier to use the needle. So we hold it together this way, and I like to come through this top and just reinforce that top part right there. Pull it through. And I go front to back. It doesn't really matter as long as you get it put together. And I just go through those stitches there and the stitch on the back. very easy all the way down to the bottom hill and then we're going to weave it in and we'll be done One more. That's the very bottom. I like to come back through and kind of do a knot twice. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to run this through the very bottom here. just to kind of weave in this end here and make it where the tail end will end up coming out at the front in case you get a little scraggly end it'll be underneath the toe and you won't see it so just keep going that's good all the way up to there so now I'm going to snip that, snip that toe, 
and we're going to turn it inside out. And there is our slipper. There's not a rider left, it's either foot. And what you can do with these also to make them non skid, a little trick that I learned online, I don't remember where, wish I did, I would give that person credit, but is you can turn them over to the bottom and use some puffy paint to just maybe do some dots on the bottom and it kind of gives them grip so you're not sliding around on your floors. Just make sure you let the paint dry. You do have to be more careful about washing them though if you do use the puff paint, but it's okay. I don't mind slipping around. They're not too bad. So there are the slippers. If there's any questions about this pattern, just please put it in the comments below and I will get back to you as soon as possible or leave it as a comment on the blog and I will have that link below so that you can check out the written pattern also. You guys have a great day and I will see you next time.